of the things that I like most in a watch, one of the functions that I enjoy more, is the GMT function. This is something that I use a lot because I used to travel and I also have many international meetings. Uh, during the last years I have checked a lot of GMTs and I have bought a couple of them. Uh, for instance, I bought the Airman, the Glycine Airman Base 22. I also bought the Christopher Ward Trident uh, C60 uh, GMT with the red bezel. But I kept looking for something similar to the Rolex Explorer 2, which I really like, and I got the Christopher Ward cylinder in white. But I sold it mainly because sometimes due to the silver hands I couldn't see the, uh, the hour, so uh, they were not painted in black, which, which, would, be, uh, which, which would have been much better for, for the, an Explorer 2 type of watch. So I sold it. I was considering buying the black version of the cylinder, but after a not so good experience with the customer support and the issues they are having to cope up with the demand of customer support, I decided to forget about that for the moment being. Then through Watch Crunch, I discovered that Nethum Studios was announcing a new watch, the Aviera, and, and what a surprise. across reviews of Nethumi watches before, specifically some chronographs. Although they have a dive watch that I find very interesting and very attractive, obviously. Going through these reviews, I see that the brand has an excellent reputation for customer service, quality, and of course, design. Nethumi Studios is a small design company founded in Stockholm in 2011 by Carlos Campo who is of Spanish and Swedish origin. And what they do is inspired by music, Porsches, racing cars and all things vintage, which translates into the design and apparent quality of their watches. In 2015, David launched his first Kickstarter campaign to create a watch. And it turned out to be a great success. Okay, but this is not a review of the watch. It is just an analysis, a critique about the specifications and the design of the watch. I recommend you to take a look at their website because they have very interesting things that go beyond the watches themselves. All about designs, clothes and cars. So it's very interesting. Check it out. Back to the Avira. Honestly, when I saw it, I was immediately drawn to it. And as I looked at the features, it seemed to have almost everything I like in this type of watch. Avira has an all brass 40mm case with a fixed 24 hour bezel, 47mm lack to lack, the case is 12mm thick, and with the domed sapphire crystal it reaches 13.55mm at the center point of that crystal. It also features 20mm lack width, screw down crown and the water resistance is up to 20 atmospheres or 200 meters. The movement inside the watch is the recent Seiko in H34, an office type GMT with over 40 hours of power reserve. These specs are indeed very promising. And the best thing is that the price is not going to exceed 500 euros. We still don't know the exact price, but they will uh, say it soon in the website. So this is a good opportunity to get something that looks like the Rolex Explorer that you will be able to use it in many circumstances without breaking the bank. Of course, I like the fixed bezel and the numerals. It doesn't have a date. It is true that I usually prefer watches without a date, but on a GMT, I find it an interesting feature. In this case, there isn't one. So on one hand, it is good, and on the other, I don't know if it should have it. In any case, it's not a big deal. I like it because it's symmetrical, it has the 3, 6, 9, and 12. Well, actually, this is what I was hoping that Trusca would do based on their summit year. But here it is, by Nezumi Studios. I reached to them because I wanted to know more about the loom, and they told me that all four hands have loom. The hour, minute, 
the GMT and the second's hand. By the way, this GMT hand has a curious skeletonized appearance, and the loom paint is on the tip rather than filling it. I also really like the vintage style of the watch in general, the curved lugs that have that contour reminiscent of Omega watches, and above all, the affordable price. I have two doubts about this watch. The first one is how strong the loom will be in the watch. This is uh, kind of important for me and this type of watches, of course. And the second is how much the anti-reflecting will have a, a blue tint, because it seems that it has a blue tint. And we'll see how strong that is and how it appears and reflects in pictures and so. But we'll have to wait until the middle of this year to, to know more about this watch. For the moment, I have subscribed to their newsletters. I'm very interested. I'm checking other watches too, but this one is really tempting for me, actually. Uh, well, that's all for today. Uh, thank you very much and see you soon in, uh, in a new video. Bye-bye.